Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's Wednesday. It's a little bit later than ordinarily we'd start a show, but that's because I had a series of events that occurred this morning that I would like to share with you. So first thing about me is that I'm kind of a creature of habit, right? I got my little setup, I wake up, I have my same little protein shake, my same little athletic greens with the coffee, I pet the cats, do all the cat-related duties, and then my day begins. I walk to the store, it's a few blocks down the street to get my food, I do my shows from my room. I wake up today, I wake up, because I want to go get Shadow of the Colossus, right? Because I'm going to be streaming that tomorrow on Friday, and I don't have Shadow of the Colossus for PS4 yet, I don't have the remaster yet. So I do what I don't normally do, I go to my car, okay? now. Already I'm feeling the stress spiking up in my body. I go to my car to drive to the store. Now, the grocery store that I go to is just a few blocks away. So I always walk to that place, walk home. There's no other reason for me to leave my house ever pretty much. So I just really don't use my car. So when I go down there this morning, it's gone. Now, I did say I'm a creature of habit, right? So, I mean, I park in the exact same spot every single day. It's not even assigned parking in my apartment complex. And I still park in the exact same spot. It's not even that convenient. It's a little bit far away from the elevator, but by God, I park there every single day because I'm a creature of habit. Now, when I get there and it's gone, I did what any normal person would do. I start hitting the lock. I start hitting the lock button because maybe I parked it somewhere else, right? I'm expecting to have a little beep, beep. Beep, beep, nothing, silence. But there's, you know, it's in the morning time in the apartment complex, so I keep hearing like a beep, beep of like someone else's car. And I'm like, <gasps> right, maybe my baby's somewhere over there. But no, I see that person get in the car and drive away. Beep, <gasps> look over there. That person gets in the car and drives away. And suddenly it's setting in on me that I, th I think my car's, I think my car's been stolen. Now, you have to understand that there was a build up to this. I don't just immediately jump to theft like that. This apartment complex has had huge issues with theft. All of my mail got stolen. Actually, all the mail in the entire apartment got broken into and stolen. Uh, packages that get ordered from Amazon get stolen. I've, I've had about 20% of my packages from Amazon just never arrived, said it was delivered, and it was gone. And of course, I talked to the front office about this, and I'm like, excuse me. You know, I try to be reasonable and understanding because, you know, theft and shit happens. But over a long period of time, this keeps happening. And now my car gets stolen oh my god so i start going through checking everything and i tend to function pretty well under pressure i didn't really you know break down and start weeping or something or get too histrionic but i was sort of like all right maybe maybe my car got towed maybe my car got towed maybe the Parking pass slipped off my dashboard. Someone saw that and thought I was some rando who'd parked in the parking lot and decided to get it towed. Let me go ask the front desk. I get there and they said, no, sir, we've had no towings in the last four days. It's Wednesday. The last time I drove my car was Sunday. So I'm like, okay, if you haven't had any towings in the last four days, then, then I think my car's been stolen. And they go, oh, stolen? And I'm like, yeah, no, I... I think my car has been stolen and my voice starts to raise because it's registering to me. Hey, I gave these people the benefit of the doubt. Maybe they towed it. And these fuckers who lost my mail that I don't read because mail sucks and like several volumes of comic books, now they've lost my car because they let in a monster who stole it. Huh. And I start, I don't say that, but what I do is say, well, I would like to see the security footage then. You know, real, real, I'm a resident exerting my moderate authority in the situation tone of voice. Oh, I would like to see the security footage. Yes, sir, absolutely. I need to finish some things, and then I'd be more than happy to do that with you. I'm like, well, when's that going to be finished? Huh? Because I want a time. I want an exact time. I'm going to put her on the spot, huh? At what time would that be? I didn't even dangle the preposition because I was on tilt. I'm down a car today. What, am I going to dangle the preposition like a normal adult? No, I'm going to not dangle the fucking preposition and lay into this woman because I want a goddamn time to look at the security footage. So what she does is says, we can do it at noon. And I said, well, I'll see you at noon. And I'm frustrated. And this woman, this other woman who's there says, oh my gosh, that's, I'm so sorry that happened. 
And I'm like, well, you know, a lot of things do get stolen here. Oh, mic drop. And she says, well, you know, I've worked all over this area and it's pretty common. And at this point in time, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, how does that help me? What am I just gonna be like, oh, it's common. All right, well, see you at noon, right? So I'm just like, well, how does that help? Not, not a good thing for me to say, but that's what I said. I was like, well, how does that help me? And she's like, sir, we will just, we'll, we'll see you at noon. Let me take down your information. So I'm like, all right, so put my name, put my phone number. They're like, what kind of car is it? And I don't know. I don't know anything about cars. Right? I don't know if it's a Honda Civic or a Honda Accord or a Honda, you know, maybe it's a Honda Tesla. I don't know. I don't know anything about cars. You could show me a bicycle and talk me into it being a car, and I'd probably believe you. I couldn't remember what it was, so I'm like, it's a silver Honda. And they're like, is it a Civic? Is it an Accord? And I was like, yeah. And I just wrote down one. It turned out to be wrong later. I wrote down Accord. It's a Civic. I don't know. Who knows? So she takes it down, and she goes, oh, it's a Honda. You know, those are easy to steal. I'm like, what are you, car shaming me? What is it my fault because I own a Honda? It's a very cost efficient, good on gas mileage kind of car. You're going to tell me they're easy to steal. Well, you know what? I'm down one car today, and this is apparently common, so I will see you at noon, ladies. Step out of there. Go up to my apartment. Now, again, I tend to be pretty good under pressure. I get very functional when things get under pressure, and I go, well, time to make the calls. Immediately call the police department. Hello, my name's Sean. I'd like to report a stolen vehicle. We had, and, you know, she asked me a whole bunch of questions. She's like, oh my God, that's, I'm so sorry. And it was, is the car insured? Yes. Is it registered? Yes. When did you last see it? 6 p.m. on Sunday. Okay. When did you find it gone? 9.15 a.m. on Wednesday, right? I have these like, little exact times. <coughs> was, was, the, was the car locked? And I go... I think so. And she says, you know what? I'm going to mark it as yes right now. Like, I think, I think it's locked. I don't know. I'm not a hundred percent certain because if my car got stolen, I mean, maybe, I mean, maybe, maybe it was me. There was one time a few years ago when I forgot to lock my car and it just got, you know, broken into, I shouldn't say broken into, but I'm going to say at least give me that shit. Okay. Um, so maybe that's what happened. Maybe someone just stepped up, got into it, and because Hondas are easy to steal, he just hit the steal button and drove off into the fucking sunset. I don't know. I don't know about cars, but I do know that I probably did lock it. So I said yes. And all of a sudden, I start to have those those doubts, right? I start to have that that pain inside me where I'm like, did I not lock my car? And all of a sudden, I'm trying to sift through the most boring memories of like, driving to go get toilet paper on Sunday and driving home. You know, I don't, that was not a emotionally spiky experience for me. I don't really remember that. I kind of feel like Jason Bourne, where I was like, who was I on Sunday night? I'm starting to get paranoid. Maybe I really screwed up. Maybe I left the doors open when I got the toilet paper out of the back seat. I don't know. I don't know much about cars. But, you know, she says that we're going to send a police officer over to take your information. And I'm like, all right. A police officer comes over. Fill out a bunch of stuff. Ask me all the sorts of information, you know, like, was it insured? Was it registered? Was it locked? I think so. And then also includes things like, was this driven at any point for governmental purposes? And I was like, no, no, I just got some toilet paper from Target. That's about it. That's about all I did. He fills it out, gives me a case number, says, we'll contact you if we ever get any information. And I said, but I mean, what normally happens when a car gets stolen? I mean, do, do they find them ever? And he says, well, you know, I don't want to give you any specific numbers. Um, you know, sometimes they get chopped up and we never see them again, but a lot of times they're just dumped after a joyride. Now, I, I, maybe it's because I haven't played Grand Theft Auto, but I don't, I don't know what dumped after a joyride means, right? That sounds kind of like what happens to everyone after they have a Happy Meal. And he explains to me that what a lot of times happens is people will steal uh, the car and then they'll just go crazy and drive it around for a few days and then just leave it somewhere when the engine ostensibly fails or it runs out of gas. I don't know. I don't know what the end point to a joyride is. I'm just, I'm just hopeful that maybe what will happen is I'll get my car back. It'll be a little screwed up, but that's okay. We can always fix a screwed up car because, as you know, streamers are made out of money. And I'll just have to chalk it up to that sucks. You know, I get a lot of luck in Hearthstone. I get my fucking car stolen. Eh, you know, the scales balance eventually. 
So I have to go up, I have to call my insurance. So I have to say, Geico, I think I'm my car's been stolen. Help me through it. Incredibly wonderful, helpful. Police officer, incredibly wonderful, helpful. Yeah, the police department that I called, incredibly wonderful and helpful. Um, I call up my bank because I'm worried that maybe I left some document in there that has some of my banking information on there. I don't really know what it would be, but I mean, this is... This is an adult male's car. There's a very blurry line between an adult male car and a garbage can, right? If I get a document, I'm like, okay, cool. And I put it in the back seat and it's not my problem anymore. I'm sure there's something either incriminating or directly related to my personal security or, I don't know, a poster from a fan or something like that's what's in the back seat. And maybe one of those will be used against me. So the bank's like, okay, cool. And they're like, you know what, you should also call one of the three major credit agencies, you know, like Experian or Equifax and let them know. And I'm like, no, Equifax already made all my information public. I don't need to worry about that. Boom. Got him. So then I just have to sit there. I have to sit there and wait. And then the front office calls me. It's about 1115. At this point, if you've been following me on Twitter, I've been tweeting up a whole bunch. I've been trying to invite as much pity as I humanly possibly can. I've been saying shit like, my car's been stolen, all shows canceled until further notice. I'm a real frowner, man. I'm seriously, I'm from Planet Frowndar where we weep it up all day long. I just need all your sympathy. Please give me the pity pats. Please like and retweet and spread the word that Sean's having a shitter day. So I've been doing that and at 11... 10, 11, 15 front office calls and says, Sir, I've spoken to our legal team and you will not be allowed to sift through all of the security footage with me, but I'm going to be beginning right now. And I was like, fine, let me know the results. You know when you get a little too formal? Listen, if you're young and you get pissed off, you become histrionic. You're like, I fucking hate you! Ah! You go crazy. When you're an adult and you're pissed off, you become too cordial. I say, yes, I suppose that will have to do. Thank you. Please inform me of the results as soon as you can. That's how we get them as adults, man. Mmm. So I did my very moderate power trip that really wasn't very satisfying at all. Got off the phone and I just sat there and sat there and just <sighs> tried to figure out what to do. Had to make a few other calls to just random agencies with information and whatnot. And then I get a call at like one. And the call is the police department. And they say, hey, we've recovered your car. And I was like, really? Like, really? Because I was talking to you guys like two and a half hours ago. You guys are amazing. That's, where is it? And they say, well, it's at the grocery store. I don't know if any of you have seen Ocean's Eleven. But there's a scene where Terry Benedict is in the vault and all his money's been stolen, and his head does this. His head goes, and then he starts to realize things, and he starts to remember, and he starts to think through everything that's happened in the past. And I, I'm Terry Benedicting, and I'm, I'm suddenly remembering that I woke up at around 6 a.m., no, earlier than that, it must have been like 4 a.m. Super jet lagged, as you can hear from my voice, I'm a little sick. And I wanted to get some food at the store that I always walk to. But I was a little cold at the time. And I was a little sick and wouldn't want to get sicker. So you know what I did? I drove to that store, got my food, and then walked home. Now again, imagine Terry Benedict tilting his head to the right and then reality comes snapping back and she goes, Sir, sir, the police officer has recovered your car at the grocery store. And I'm like, very well, I'll be right, I'll be right over. So the walk is not, it's not like right outside the front door. It's a little bit of a walk. So I have to walk there and I have to just process what I'm gonna tell this police officer because what I want to do is to lie. What I wanna do is lie so much because I don't really do things that embarrass me that often. Actually, I would say that for the most part, I don't really say or do anything that I'm deeply ashamed of, but my whole body's ashamed. 
Every part of me wants to die. It hurts. You know that thing that the political news outlets do when they want to make a politician look like a real shitter? You know that face? That... Like, my I, my whole body is exuding political shitter face as I'm walking there. So what I want to do is I want to be like, oh, I don't know, maybe the criminals decided to do some grocery shopping and then they thought better of it and walked home themselves. I'm just walking there and I'm like... Oh my God, I'm just gonna have to tell this cop what's up, man. So I get there and he's, he's a cop, all right? I mean, let's, let's all just say that we don't believe in stereotypes, but you know what I'm talking about when like, he's a cop in full uniform. It's, I mean, really crisply pressed clothes. Never had such beautifully tailored pressed clothes in my life. He's wearing sunglasses. He's got the short buzz. He has a very neutral expression. He's holding a clipboard. He's got a pen. He's got a utility belt that would make Batman filled with envy. And he says, sir, is this your car? And suddenly my voice is a little higher than it normally is. I was like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Walk close to him. Just asking if he smelled good. I don't know. I've, I'm sick, man. My, I'm all clogged up. So he goes, do you, do you see it as being in the condition when you left it? I see there's some damage to the car because my car's a little scraped up. Look, I remember one time I was trying to back out of a mall and I hit a pole and crunched in the front fender and I just thought that's the way the fender looks now because it's just a car, right? This isn't a status symbol for me. I mean, most of the time I'm just walking to the grocery store. I don't really need my car to look fancy. I guess if it's dented, it's dented. So he's like inspecting and he's like, perhaps the culprit caused damage here and here. And I was like, nope, nope, that's my damage. He's like, you damaged your front fender and left it like that. And I was like, mm -hmm. and there's a moment where I'm like, I can't lie to the police officer. Like, just don't lie to the cop. Just don't, just don't. Part of me wanted to really be like, wow, someone really stole it without hot wiring anything. And they didn't have a copy of the keys and there was no damage. And they left the mug of the bear waving in the driver's seat when they left right where I left it. What a thoughtful criminal. I wanted to do that, but instead I had to say, you know, I'm, a little jet lagged and uh, I'm a little sick and uh, I wanted to get some food here and I normally walk but I, I think I drove and because I was a little out of it I just walked home and the officer said to me oh makes sense happens all the time I went really and he's like yeah, I'd probably say we get several calls a week of someone who parked somewhere they don't normally park or, uh, you know, parked somewhere and forgot and, you know, they're jet lagged or out of it or sleepy. Uh, you know, it happens all the time. And I'm like, oh, thank you, officer. Thank you so much, officer. I had to ask me some questions, I had to sign a thing. And so I'm really relieved. I'm really relieved because I've been holding in all these different lies that I'm going to have to perpetuate with law enforcement for decades. And all that burden is leaving my body and I have my car back and I have my bear mug where the bear's waving at me. And I'm gonna get to go home and I'm just gonna be able to stream. And then I remember that I, I'm probably gonna have to call the insurance company and the bank and the, and the front office Oh my God, the front office is going through the security tapes, aren't they? So I get back home and I park my car in the exact same spot that I always park it in. Go all the way upstairs. Think I'm going to call the front office and I'm like, no, let me, let me just call Geico first. Let me call Geico first. I'm just going to call Geico first. Call Geico. Uh, they said, oh, sir, you have a great attitude about this. Don't worry about it. We've removed it. Happens all the time. It's fine. Okay, cool. Call the bank, I want to let you know everything's okay, you don't have to put any sort of weird monitors in the account, recover the car, told them the story, they're like, oh, well, that's great news, sir, you have a great attitude about it. And you'll recall that I gave a little bit of attitude to the front desk, huh? Because I've lost my mail. I never got delivered volume four of Ultimate Spider-Man and now my car's been stolen! 
and they're going through security footage, right? So I so I have to get on I get on the phone with them. I, I didn't even go to the front office, right? Like before, when I thought my car was stolen, I like kicked that door in and confronted all of them. But now I'm just like timidly calling them from the phone. Hello, yes, this is the this is the man who uh Hi. Um this is this is the man who uh thought his car was stolen. I wanna let you know. Uh, the car, the car's been, uh, it's been recovered at the grocery store. And she's like, oh, really? What happened? Uh, uh, w uh well, uh, I was quite sick and I, uh, well, I, I drove to the, uh, grocery store to get food and medicine and then I walked home so it was simply there. And she goes, oh, really? Is that what happened? Oh, for fuck's sake, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Just make fun of me, okay? Don't do that. Don't give me that. I've given myself that a thousand times. I have political shitter expressions coming out of every orifice, okay? I don't want you to tell me. Oh, really? Oh. Well, sir, that's great news to hear. And now I want to leave this whole apartment complex. I don't know if you can ghost an apartment, but that's what I want to do now. I literally, just without telling them, I just want to change my identity, move out, stop paying, close the accounts, and just never look at them ever again. I have way too much shame here, man. This is too much shame. I, like, got back to my apartment. And the cat was like, meow. And I was like, no, I can't even be looked at by an organism. I want to just like, I like put my hand on the cat's face and I just like turned it to the side. It's really hard to communicate unovercomable shame to a cat. But I tried, I tried really hard to explain to Sheriff and Despy that sometimes your father gets attitude and he's in the wrong. And it only happens when he's going to get shit from the people who frankly should have better security at their apartment complex. So in the good news... Um, department, I have a car. In the bad news department, part of me wants to look out the window and see a meteor hurtling towards Earth and go, oh, thank God, at least all of humanity is going to die. At least all of humanity is going to just blow up in a ball of flames so I don't have to deal with this anymore. So that was my morning.